Here we've got a Pi Black Box record player. This one happens to be the PCL83 version. We found a couple of um, rough versions in the auction house. Later on, Mark is going to service these and uh, take you through the circuit diagram and the work that he's done. Uh, right now we've got the EL42 version where Phil Moss will take you through the circuit diagram. Pi Black Box. There are at least three valve amplifiers used in the Pi Black Box. And the Black Box is so called because it's actually brown unless you have the Japanese lacquer version which is very posh with Japanese traditional scenes painted on it. They're the very desirable ones. Anyway, in this amplifier we have an ECC83 and two EL42s. Of which, although they are pentodes, you will notice that they are triode connected. Now the alternative version to this has them ultralinear connected and that is the version that I repaired some time ago. But going to the input, well it's a ceramic or crystal cartridge input so we don't have a great deal of gain in this. You will notice the tapped pot for the volume which is a difficult item to replace because you won't get tap pots anymore, not as new production. The reason for this is tonal correction at low levels um, called loudness. So you've got a resistor and a capacitor and basically it's something of top cut. To be done correctly actually it would need to boost both treble and bass relative to mid. However that's rather more complicated. There is another version which has a separate pot for the correction and you have what appears to be a stereo pot on the input for a mono input. But this is the simpler version with just one pot. So the signal is fed through a grid stopper to the first half of the ECC83. Very straightforward high gain amplifier 220k anode load there. It then feeds to the phase splitter again very simple split load phase splitter. So the resistor in the anode and the cathode are the same value and notes that they are both marked 2% tolerance. They're high stabs, they're the only two resistors probably that you'll find in it that haven't changed value. So you've got the antiphase drive going through the very small 0.005s or 5000 PFs. There will be a certain amount of base roll off there probably to keep the amplifier stable from motor boating at low frequency. Grid leaks, as I pointed out, triode connected output valves, sharing a single bias resistor which isn't very desirable. It isn't bypass but then if they are working um, in proper push-pull then there won't be any signal voltage generated there because once one is increasing its current the other one is decreasing its current and they cancel out. Output transformer with no compensating components across the primary. Two speakers in parallel, um, they're the same size and opposite sides of the cabinet. We then have negative feedback and is, as is often done in the cheaper units, um, they include the tone control in there. So we have some negative feedback here which is not variable and we have a capacitor across it and that feeds back to the potential divider in the cathode of the first um, triode. That being the lower resistor of the potential divider and these components the higher. Now we have a pot with a capacitor in its wiper. If we ignore that we simply have that resistor in parallel with this resistor to make up the total feedback resistance. That doesn't vary with frequency. But here the capacitor only feeds back treble. So if we turn it up it feeds back more treble and therefore there is more feedback at the treble frequencies and therefore it represents treble cut. At the bottom end, however, not only is no treble fed back via the pot, 
but this capacitor forms a potential divider with this capacitor and reduces the amount of treble that is fed back compared to middle and base and therefore constitutes treble boost as there is less feedback. Um, apart from that, not a lot to point out. It's all familiar to you, I suspect, from other things I have described. We've got the coupling for the first valve here and the capacitor there, an unusual value of 12 microfarads. You don't normally get them. 10 is preferred, but 12 isn't. But if you're making a lot of something and find you need something a little bit bigger, then they'll manufacture it for you. Full wave rectifier using an EZ41. Large capacitor here, 25 microfarads, which feeds the output stage directly without any further smoothing. Perhaps done a bit on the cheap, to be honest. And then they have a lot more smoothing to keep the hum out of the front end. They earth one side of the heater. Um, it might be a little less hummy if they were to use a twisted pair and either a centre tapped winding or two resistors of equal value to earth one from each side of it. But anyway, they've earthed one side. We have a mains transformer which is tapped for either 200 to 220 or 225 to 250 volts. Obviously this is AC only and they show the feed to the grand motor. And that is really all there is to say about the Pi Black Box amplifier with EL42s and ECC83s, except if you're not aware of it, these three valves are on the B8A valve base and this is on the B9A valve base. Finito!